When he speaks, his emotions are put aside. The only thing in, before him is he's, th- this messenger is committed to delivering revelation. That's it. Whether it reaches somebody's heart or not, he knows that's not up to him. Because what goes in the heart comes from Allah. Otherwise, these are just sound waves. They, they, whether they reach or not, that's not up to us. Y- you get that? It's an incredible, incredible message inside وَمَا يَنْطِقُوا عَنِ الْهَوَى وَالنَّجْمِ إِذَا هَوَى مَا ضَنَّ صَاحِبُكُمْ وَمَا غَوَى Make the most of this series by downloading our free workbook for a guided contemplation of this powerful surah. But now we get to the meat of the matter on this ayah. I was going to get to ayah number six. <laughs> I'm going to get to ayah number three. This is, what, this is all we're going to do today. وَمَا يَنْتِقُوا عَنِ الْهَوَى He says, they, you know, think of it this way. A public speaker or a speaker, because the Prophet ﷺ is now speaking the Quran, so he's become a public speaker. What are the motivations of a public speaker? They want to be acknowledged. They want their idea to be heard. They, somebody publishes a book. What is their desire? Inshallah, it will sit in the library collecting dust one day. No, their desire is millions of people are going to read this book. When somebody writes a PhD thesis, they're really hoping people do what? They read it. When you make a stupid post about what slice of pizza you ate and your amazing contemplation on the cheese and you put it up on Instagram, you check all the time for what? Acknowledgement. Somebody saying, oh my God, that's so deep. I'll never eat pizza the same way again, etc. You're looking for something because a speaker, a presenter, when they present their idea in public, they desire acknowledgement. They desire to be heard. They desire to be understood. Maybe they desire to be praised. Maybe they desire to be, you know, seen, valued. Wow, that was ingenious. Maybe they desire to be put on a social position. I want to learn more from you. Maybe they desire that. But there are desires behind speech. Like if I'm sitting here giving you this lecture and two of you are talking, it will annoy me. It'll annoy me because I'm desiring to be heard right now and you're taking away from that and it's agitating me because I'm directly impacted by what you're doing, right? The Prophet ﷺ is being described as something different. When he speaks, he has no desire to be heard, no desire to be acknowledged, no desire to be appreciated, no desire to be followed. He's only doing this because Allah told him to. And none of his personal ambitions or emotions, conscious or subconscious, are part of the equation. This is the most incredible expression of pure, like a million percent pure sincerity. Because this is a level of purity. I don't know if it's humanly possible for the rest of us. I don't know if it is. But there's one thing I can tell you when talking about the Quran, because this is tied to the giving, the delivery of the Quran. He says, It's not, it's not up to me to change it from myself. The Prophet doesn't decide what words will come out. And by the way, most of the time that words that were coming out were offensive. And when somebody's angry, and then the next ayah is even more offensive. And then they get angrier and the next ayah is even more offensive. And then on top of that, you should know you're going to be in Jahannam. And g- congrats to the believers that are getting beat up. Oh my God, this is like, maybe, you know, in my mind it would be, how I would be, maybe I shouldn't say this right now. Maybe I'll recite the surah later when there's nobody listening, or when I'm around a less hostile crowd, then I'll recite this. Right now, I'm explaining Surah Al-Najm to you, but you're all willingly listening. You took time, you know, time, money, effort, away from family to sit here and listen. You think this was the situation of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? There's a bunch of mushrikun, atheists, materialists, anti, anti-Islam, like dictators, narcissists, 
in front of him and he's reciting the Quran and they're making noise, does he stop? He say, maybe I should go to a more willing audience. No, clearly, وَمَا يَنْتِقُوا عَنِ الْهَوَى He's delivering the Quran no matter what the response. He's not concerned with the viewership and the following and the comments. Most of us, you post anything online. I don't care if you're a public speaker or not. You post something online. What do you check? Comments. In fact, even if you listen to, you, you, you put somebody else's khutbah on or lecture on, you're not even listening to the lecture. You're just going through the mashallahs and finding somebody who's trolled the speaker. You know what they said? Oh my God. <laughs> this is what you're doing. We're so obsessed with the commentary. وَمَا يَنْتِقُوا عَنِ الْهَوَى means, first of all, he's not dying to express his talents to the world like a philosopher is dying to share his philosophy. A singer is dying to sing his song. A storyteller is dying to tell his story. The Prophet ﷺ is not like, oh my God, the world needs to know what I have inside me. No, no, no. Allah has given him this. It's not, an, it's not a projection of his own ego like it is for every other public speaker. It's not. And then on top of that, you know, a, a public speaker really listens to feedback, right? This, this poem was a big hit. This was not a big hit. This speech went really well. That one didn't. Now I'm going to change my style to cater to the audience because I need to nurture my audience. And by the way, now this is a multi-billion dollar, trillion dollar industry. How do you nurture an audience and how do you cater your message to pander to an audience better and better? Isn't that what social media analytics are now? Isn't that what people are doing degrees in now? You know, marketing degrees and social media analytics degrees and trends, studying trends and behaviors and <laughs> all of this to what? Get engagement, get a crowd, get an audience. And all of it is just Allah just pours acid over it, just saying, Mayantiku anil hawa. He's not concerned with what people want to hear. He's just not concerned with that. He's just Quran. You know, I'll tell you something personal as I conclude this. Um, uh, this is, by the way, I, I said this to you out loud, but you can take this. This is for you to, you know. When I was developing Quran Week, this program, before this, when I was traveling, I was doing another program called Story Night. And Story Night is my pent-up desire to be a comedian. Masked with Dars al-Quran. Like, I, I enjoy myself in Story Night. I, I'm, I love telling stories. I love, you know, I, you know, this academic geeky stuff, this is one side of me. There's another side of me that is the opposite of this. It's entirely stupid. And that's the side of me that comes out in Story night. And I really, it's just three hours. It's entertaining. It's kids are there. They're having a lot of fun. Non Muslims come and, come and enjoy themselves. It's easy. It's no hard work. It's on autopilot. I have to do nothing for it. And I was like, let's go to communities and contemplate a whole surah of the Quran. And you know what my team said? Who's going to come to that? People aren't ready for that. People have TikTok attention span. After 90 seconds, they, no, 90 is too long, 30 seconds. Pew, pew, pew. They're going to try to swipe you in the first day. People are going to say, I'm not coming back to this. This is too much. It's too much stuff. There's too much material. It's too, it's too deep. It's too heavy. That's not what the public wants. I was like, yeah, but the thing is, the uh, of the Quran is dying. It, we're not doing it as a people. And I had to make a decision whether one of you shows up or none of you shows up, I'm going to do the Book of Quran. And I want to act, even if I can ignite one person to start doing the Book of Quran in one community, I'm good. But I, 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 and I could have been sitting at Bayina campus doing this in front of a camera. I, I could do that. I've done Surat Yusuf like that, Surat Al-Kahf like that, Surat Ali Imran like that. But I was like, no, I want, to, I want to travel and take the hard work with me. You know, and I'm, Part of the, the blocks, mental blocks I had is, I don't think this is going to work because it's not a desirable program because it's too much work. And then there are ayat like these that slap you across the face. So what if it's not desirable? So what if it's not catering to the marketed audience? So what if it's not going to get, that's not your goal. That's not your goal. 
I have to cleanse myself to the point where two of you are sitting here, 200 of you are sitting here, 2,000 of you are sitting here, makes no difference. That's when I've understood something from When he speaks, his emotions are put aside. The only thing in, before him is he's, th this messenger is committed to delivering revelation. That's it. Whether it reaches somebody's heart or not, he knows that's not up to him. Because what goes in the heart comes from Allah. Otherwise, these are just sound waves. They, they, whether they reach or not, that's not up to us. Y you get that? It's an incredible, incredible message inside وَمَا يَنْتِقُوا عَنِ الْهَوَى Notice finally that the word hawa, emptiness, falling, is, a, is repeated. When najmi إِذَا hawa. ما ضل صاحبكم وما غوى وما ينطق عن الهوى. The star falls. In the beginning, the star falls. But the Prophet ﷺ doesn't. Stars can fall, but this message doesn't. There's a contrast made between the use of the hawa in the first ayah and the third ayah. I'm really excited about this week. I don't know if I'll be able to finish Surah Al-Najm or not. I really don't. If I don't finish it, I'm going to request Epic to take extra days and finish it. And if no, none of you can make it, I'm okay with that. I'm still coming and finishing it, inshallah. But I think we can do it. I think we can do it. My intention tomorrow, inshallah, is to try to reach ayah number 18. That's the first section. I know that this three ayah took this long, so I'm like, oh, <laughs> he thinks he's going to reach 18. Maybe. Let's have hope. Things can, they can start progressing a little faster now that I've laid the groundwork for you. So, um, so we're hoping to reach ayah number 18 tomorrow, inshallah. But before I conclude, I want you to know that these booklets that you were given, right? These booklets are going to be about how to contemplate the Quran. And each lens, I'm going to give you from each lens something to, to, to take away. And the, before we start the lens, there's something we call the heart filter. I talked to you about, the, about that in the beginning. I'm going to talk to you about that now so you have that with you. I have to spiritually, emotionally ready myself before I do tadabbur. For tafsir, I have to intellectually prepare myself. For tafsir, remember when I was doing tafsir of a word? There was Arabic sources and quotes from scholars and sahaba and tabi'een and things like that, right? That's intellectual work. But tadabbur does not require your brain. Tadabbur requires your what? It's your heart. The prerequisites are in my heart. The first prerequisite is Allah's speech is perfect and my understanding isn't. Which means when I read something and it's not making sense to me, it's because my understanding isn't wide enough and vast enough. And Allah's wisdom is infinite. I have to humble myself before the speech of Allah. This is one of the hardest prerequisites of tadabbur because we live in a critical society. Every message you receive, you critique it. You put a heart on it. You put a thumbs up on it. You put a thumbs down on it. You put a commentary on it. You take a course in college. You rate your professor. You listen to a speech. You rate it. You listen, even, people are now really into rating even a khutbah. People rate khutbahs. And this is, it's become such a practice. I gave a khutbah one time, a brother came up to me, that was really good. But if you use this ayah and this ayah, it would have been better. I was like, this is ratemychutbah.com now? Like, like, I'll give you a 7.5. I wasn't looking for a score, bro. But, but we're now rating Islam too. Who's your favorite speaker? What score do you give him? This stupidity has to stop. This nonsense has to stop. This pe kids used to do this for athletes, for basketball players. People do this for UFC fighters. And now you do this for sheikhs. What is this? This is, this is the religion now? We've, we've molded the religion into this. because Why? Because what our heart desires is more important than the message. So if a speaker has an accent or a speaker isn't, charismatic or a speaker is too old you're like ah, no, i can't pay attention it's not it's not entertaining enough it doesn't give me that high you know there's like there's no jokes in his speech yeah they're not you know the people i listen to they're really boring 
They're really, but I love them. I learn. I, I literally have to stop every five to seven minutes because my eyes are rolling up. But I still listen to them because I get more benefit from them than anything else. Than anything else. The Quran is not there to cater to you because it came from your master. The master doesn't cater to the slave. The slave caters to the master. That's the shift in attitude when I come to the Quran. That's my heart filter. I, I cannot come to it like a critic. I can't come to it like a, a product on Amazon. I only give it two and a half stars. You know, not like that. The, 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 the next filter in the Quran, I'm looking for something. I'm looking for guidance. I'm not looking for information. I'll get the information, but the goal wasn't information. The goal was what? It was guidance. As you contemplate today, your homework assignment, three ayat, all we've done is three ayat. Your homework assignment is, what guidance am I getting personally from these three ayat? What, what do I get from these three ayat? I mean, I've shared some tafsir comments with you. I've shared what it means. I went through the vocabulary and all of it. That's just, that's tafsir. Now we got to do what? Tadabur. What does this mean for me? I shared some tadabur from my yantiqu anil hawa with you, but you must have your own. You must do the work yourself. This is Allah speaking to you. Allah speaking to me. Everyone, liyadabbaru ayatihi. Somebody asked a beautiful question and I'll conclude with it. You can, you can turn this off now. Beautiful question. He said, the Sahaba had so many opinions. Why? And how come they just didn't tell us what the Prophet said about the Quran? It would have been easier. The thing is, Allah designed this Quran in a really incredible way. He didn't say so that the Prophet reflects on it. He said, ayatihi. So they reflect on it. So you understand. Who was supposed to ask questions about the ayat and ponder about the ayat and wonder about the ayat? Who was supposed to do that? We were. If the Prophet ﷺ, my theory is if the Prophet ﷺ started doing tafsir of the Quran, he'd still be alive. There's too much wisdom there. Allah would keep him alive longer than Nuh Because <laughs> it wouldn't be done. And even if he did the most brief tafsir of the Qur'an, he described one ayah with one hadith. If he did that, you know what would happen? Nobody would ever contemplate the Qur'an again. You know why? Because we'd say, how can I speak after the Prophet has spoken? How can I speak? I can't have any thoughts about this because the thoughts have come from the ultimate authority, the Prophet himself, a God's authorized teacher. Allah gave us this Qur'an and He spread it around the world and He said, this is ayat for people who will contemplate. Imagine the first century, 10 years after the Prophet ﷺ, people have reached Abyssinia, China, India. They're all over the place. Those people, when they're hearing the ayat of the Qur'an, they're like, do you have a tafsir with this? Can I, can, can I can read? What were they doing? They were hearing the ayat and what were they doing with the ayat? They were contemplating. And as they were contemplating, they were accepting Islam. And as they were accepting Islam, we became Muslim as a result of that. What we did is we replaced tadabbur with tafsir. And then we said, tafsir is only for scholars. It's not for you. Sure, tafsir is for scholars. To write. And it's for me to read. And then to do tadabbur. But we, we separated the Muslim population from engaging with the Qur'an. I come from Pakistan, and in South Asia, one of the most common things you'll hear about the Qur'an is, don't read it directly, don't read a translation, don't think about it, you'll get misguided. And I say, the book that came to guide humanity and your religious advice is, don't think about it, because you'll get misguided. Incredible. It was just incredible. The job of those who know is to make it easy for those who don't know. But you will shahid al ghaib. That's that's our job. What do we do now? No, no, no. We are not going to come to you. You have to come to us. <laughs> the, the, we we flip the script on this 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 the, the delivery of the message. I want every one of you to develop a love of contemplating Quran. And you will see benefits of it in your life.
that you never imagined. Never. I'm telling you, it is the most fulfilling thing you will do with your life that I could do with my life is contemplate the Quran. You know, I find studying tafsir exhausting. But after, when the tafsir study is done and I start doing tadabbur, oof, nothing like it. Best job in the world. It's the best job in the world. I was sitting with Sheikh Suhaib in Scotland in a cafeteria. We were just doing tadabbur for five hours. And I just had to stop in the middle and say, isn't this the most amazing job on the planet? And he said, yeah, don't tell anyone. I was like, I'm gonna. <laughs> I want all of you to have that joy. He said, فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هُوَ خَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Because of the Qur'an, they should be filled with joy. It's better than everything else that they're gathering. Let's gather some Qur'an. So with that, I'm going to conclude our first session. I think it went fairly well, inshallah, but that's up to you. I don't care about your comments. But, <laughs> but do do the homework assignment, and I'll see, inshallah, all of you tomorrow. Hey guys, you just watched a small clip of me explaining the Qur'an in depth as part of the Deeper Look series. Studying the Qur'an in depth can seem like a really intimidating thing that's only meant for scholars. Our job at Bayan is to make deeper study of the Qur'an accessible and easy for all of you. So take us up on that challenge. Join us for this study, the deeper look of the Qur'an, for this surah and many other surahs on BayanaTV.com under the Deeper Look section.